Hello and welcome to this uh, class. We are going to be talking about databases and uh, how they are implemented. We are going to look at how to implement a basic database and the concepts that you need to know and understand before you carry out uh, an implementation or a design of a database. So uh, we are going to start uh, with the initialization or the launching of uh, a database management system. So we shall be using Microsoft Access as our tool or uh, as our database management system. So you click the start button. The start button is at uh, the bottom left corner of any screen or in any version of the operating system that you're using. I'm currently using Windows 10. So you click at the bottom left corner and then uh, you this menu is arranged in alphabetical order. But if you're using Windows 7, uh, you will simply look out for Microsoft Office. Okay and then select a preferred version that you are going to be using. So I'm going to be using uh, uh, Windows or Windows 10 and then the Microsoft Access Win uh, Office Suite 2007. So click at Microsoft Office, then in Microsoft Office we are going to look out for uh, Microsoft Office Access 2007. Click at it once and it should be able to launch on your screen. So give it some time, it loads on your screen and then it will load with this window. So in this window you will look out for the blank database. I prefer using a blank database than templates because when you want to appreciate a database and how it is designed and to know the concepts, the basic concepts that you need to understand or learn, you need to work with a blank database. You do the entire thing yourself, step by step. So click that button once and on the right, you will have this menu. This window will pop up and this window you realize that it tells us that we are going to save our database on logical drive C in account of users admin and it will store it in documents. So I want to be specific. I want to change the root. I want to change this root and uh, I will click this icon of a folder. I want to navigate or to browse if I need to use the word. So I want to browse, so I'll ch check out for this dialog box. And then on the left section, we have uh, we have locations where you can store or save your database. I'm going to choose desktop. So once I click at desktop, I'm going to uh, create a folder on my desktop. These are the folders that are found on my desktop. So uh, I'm on top, I have a button, new folder. Click that button. I prefer storing my database in a folder. So I'm going to create it and say my record files. Press enter once to confirm to the name that you've typed in there. Double click at it to open it using the left mouse button to double click. Then change the name of the file. The file name is the database name. So we are creating our database and we are calling it uh, shoppers. Shoppers, shoppers on, shoppers all. Okay, let's just look at shoppers database. 
so I'm going to create shoppers DB so it's a database file shoppers DB and then I click OK so once I click OK you realize that now it has file name shoppers DB dot SCCDB so it is a, a folder the folder at which it resides uh, it is on logical drive C in users admin and then on the desktop and then desktop I created a folder called my record files and that's the folder uh, to which I'm saving this database so all you need to do is to click create and uh, once you click create uh, ladies and gentlemen you would have created yourself a blank database the database file is already created and is just waiting for you to to enter your to create what we call tables a table is a basic unit where you can store your data once you create your yourself a database uh, it will come with this table which we don't actually need for now uh, on the extreme right corner it has uh, the cross which is a close button click at it and the table will be loaded out another name for a table is a relation so when we talk of a table in the database management systems you know we are talking of a relation we have what we call the office button which is this this is the office button and it has a menu that drops down so besides it it has tabs so you realize that database tools and database functions most of them are arranged according to tabs okay so for now we shall be creating a database table and we shall be using the create tab once you click at the create tab you are going to be able to create objects objects in a database that you have just created objects include uh, tables forms reports queries and macros what we want to do is to create a table we have said the table is a relation in a database what do we need to know about the tables when we talk of a table a table is just like you've seen tables before a table is a relation and it the table normally it has columns and has rows the things that you need or concepts that we need to understand so what when we talk of a column a column runs vertically and it has another name which we know as a field so a column is a field and then we have what we know as rows a row just one row is what we know as a record so another name of a row in a database table is a record so a table can have various columns and can have various rows this means that one column has a specific property there are properties that define which kind of data is supposed to be stored in one column this can be uh, allowing us to store numbers it's okay you can store numbers to this particular column only numbers that means that for each row as long as you're entering data for a particular row and you have come across a particular column for that particular entry 
you need to enter only numbers there. It does not accept uh, characters. If you have defined a particular column and you're supposed to enter date, date or time, as long as you have come or you've put your cursor to that column, you're going to be able to enter date and time. It will not allow you to enter any other uh, kind of data. So that's what defines a table. Each column needs to have a particular kind of data that it has to store. Then you talk of entry of data row by row. When you're entering data, you don't enter data column by column. No. You enter data, row, complete it, and then enter data on another row. So this means that one row has a full record of one item. Take for example, if we need to store data about sugar. Sugar is an item. It's a commodity. That means we need to know the name of the commodity whose data we are entering, which is sugar. And then we need to identify the quantity of that sugar. We need to identify the supplier of that sugar. We need also to identify how much a kilogram costs. Okay? So, we are still talking of, of one item, sugar. We are not yet talking about beans or flour. So, you enter one row for sugar, then complete it, and then switch to another row. Enter for beans, complete it. Go to another row, enter for maybe ice cream, complete it. So that's the way we enter data in a database table. So let's design our database. Now that you know some of the basic things. And then we, we also define what we need to look at later. So I'm going to select the create tab. And then select table design. I'm not selecting template or table. I'm particularly selecting table design because I want to design a table myself. I want to be able to define which kind of column. We have said a column is the same thing as a, a field. So the first column in our database will be the item item code. In this item code, which kind of data shall we enter in that column? We shall be entering a number. So this is the list of all possible data types. We t when you talk of a data type, we mean the kind of data that you're going to enter in that particular column, no matter the row that you're talking about or you're entering for. As long as you are within that column, which kind of data will be acceptable there? It will be a number. Okay? So you can select, when you select a number or auto number, the two number and auto number, they remain numbers. These two are number. This is an auto number and then we have number. The difference between number and auto number is that number will be entered manually. You will enter it yourself. However, auto number will generate automatically. Whenever you enter one record, it will put for you one extra digit. It will increment it by one. So, click that. Then, some people um, we might wonder why I'm, I'm leaving the description. The description, we might not need it for now. 
because we are running we're going to create a, a simple database but if I need to mention something about the description the description is the data about the data you're going to save it is a data dictionary and in that case it make it it means that it is uh, what we call the meta data metadata is data about data so i'm leaving that for now um concentrating on uh, this so w after uh, identifying the item code we need to define which kind of item what's its name and when you talk of a name of an item an item like sugar like uh, ice cream like colgate those are names of objects physical objects an object that you can touch a speaker or a phone so you realize that whatever you'll be typing in that column will be characters so we leave our entry as text text will allow characters a b c d 3 okay all those are characters however i need to mention something here there is what we call characters numbers and then there is another type which we know as the alphanumerical so numbers are numerical values they are numbers one two three up to some digit okay and then we have characters characters are a b c d okay or a combination of uh, characters added together to form a word or a sentence something like that but when we talk of a combination of a number and a character typically we looking we looking at uh, an alpha numerical value it is a combination of a number and a character so once you combine those two that is no longer a number it cannot be allowed to 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 or accepted acceptable to be entered as a number why not a number because you cannot add number that it has uh, C160 plus D170 which answer will you get there is no answer there okay it can't give you any result so we cannot accept it as a number it is just alpha numerical so in this case the only data type that can suit it it is text all right so we want to know which item name we want to know which each item needs to have uh, a code then we need to get the item name after getting the item name we need to define the quantity of uh, the item that we need to take which kind of quantity when we talk of quantity we are looking at things that are countable one two three four five they are countable so it is we shall take quantity as a a number because you can qu count can take count of something one two three four until some point but you cannot get quantity and you say the quantity is zero it is uh, zero c z 17 that is not quantity okay possibly it's a code okay so there we are we want to know maybe uh, the cost price we want to know the cost price uh, the, when we talk of the cost price the price when we talk of the price we are talking of something that uh, deals or has something to do with money and money is currency okay so we look at currency then the date of purchase let's talk of the date of purchase the date of uh, uh, purchase so when we talk of the date of purchase the date 
Debt cannot be taken by by anything. It will we shall take by debt time. Debt time. That's the date of purchase. Okay. So for now we have just created uh we have just defined our table and uh, we need to look at what we call properties. We need to look at the properties. Properties are located down here under the protect uh, property section, the field property section. So for each field that you create, you need to define its properties down here. So a property, when you talk of a property, we, we can talk of a size of something. We can talk of the color. We can talk of characters that it's, it starts with. Okay, Those are defined under properties. So I'm going to keep it simple for now. Uh, maybe well, how many characters shall we allow when we enter uh, item name? How many characters shall we allow? That much you define in the field size. How many characters shall we allow? But for now, let me create something since it's our first time. Uh, let's create something that it will not uh, give you a hard time. Let's just get ourselves started. Right. So here comes another concept that you need to understand, which is a primary key. Whenever you create a table, each table should have a field whose data defines or uniquely defines one record. So each table should have what we call a primary key. Now, the definition of a primary key, if you need to understand what we mean by a primary key, there is that number that uniquely identifies each row or each record. Take for example, if you have, if you, you walk in a room and there are two people or seven people with the same name, John, and you walk in that room and you say, John, stand up. The next answer from those people will be, like which John are you talking of? Is it John the big? John the small? Or John John the tidy? Or John, maybe they have nicknames. Which kind of John are you talking of? So it gives you hard time to define which kind of John unless each of those Johns have numbers. That number uniquely identifies John. That number is what we call the primary key. It uniquely identifies each record. So that's the number that we need. That's the field that we need to define. Which field shall have a number that uniquely identifies a particular record? So when you look at these, all these uh field names. We have item code, we have item name, we have quantity, we have cost price, we have purchase. A primary key has what we call properties. It has uh, rules that it has to follow. A primary key, one, one of the, pro or the rules is that a primary key must be unique. It should be unique. It should never be duplicated. It cannot be duplicated. Once it detects any duplication, that means it, there is trouble, there is some problem somewhere. And it's going to, to alert you that, yes, you have defined this, con this column to be our primary key. That means you cannot duplicate values in this column. Otherwise, if you duplicate values in this column, you're going to have trouble. Why don't we duplicate values? Take for instance, you are registering in a school 
as a new student at the gate they capture your name as Serum Comadamian and then you proceed on to the reception they capture your name as Serum Koma Damian or Damian with E at the gate they captured Damian with A now they're capturing Damian as E then someone walks to maybe to the principal or the HM and then asks for the name you tell him I'm Serum Kuma Damian and instead of Damian he hears Daniel or Daniel so he writes Serum Kuma Daniel Damian is different from Daniel but because of uh, duplication of data you're more likely to have different files so to avoid all that data inconsistency and the duplication of values that's why we need to use what we call a primary key we have said the primary key uniquely identifies a particular row and it can never be duplicated it can never be duplicated next rule is that you can never ever leave a primary key empty that means you can never leave it null it doesn't accept null values null means possibly empty you've not entered anything there it doesn't accept it so we need to define it when you look at this item code ca is it possible that we can have a unique code yes it is possible next that means this one is part of our candidate kids it, uh, is it possible that we can have a unique name it is possible or not possible at some point a unique name not possible it is possible to have a duplication of names why do we say duplication of names it's possible to go to the supermarket buy a kilogram of sugar before you cross the road to your house you realize that I needed two kilograms of sugar you go back to the same uh, same store buy another sh kilogram of sugar it's still sugar that you're buying and entry will be taken into the database that means that ca there can be some duplication okay so just like uh, the example I gave you can have two Damians in one room or three Damians it is possible but how do you de uniquely identify them is by use of uh, a code is it possible that you cannot you can have a quantity of two duplicated it's true you can duplicate two 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 as your quantity two kilograms two kilograms or 70 kilograms 70 kilograms it is possible that means these two item name quantity cost price uh, purchase date of purchase cannot they cannot they cannot uh, suit our primary key properties it is only item code that can be taken in as a primary key so click at primary key and uh, select it click at the column name or the field name that you have possibly identified it to suit the nanny duplication of data and cannot be left null as long as it can be uh, attached to that or fitting for that simply click at under the design tab click at the primary key icon and you realize that it will have uh, a primary key next to the item code after doing that now it is time to save your table how would we save our table it is pretty simple up there we have a button for save it looks like a, fo a floppy disk click at it and then we shall have save as name so let us save our table delete out table one and give it a 
a name that suits what you're going to store in that so we shall we are going to store items there it is a table to deal with items it is going to store details about the items so click that and the table is now created and can we uh, interact with the table yes we can just double click on the extreme left we have the table uh, items table double click at it and we shall have this table window uh, open for us now you realize that in the item code we do not have you, you it's not going to it has new that means it's already an auto number so you just enter sugar there so as long as you entered something you realize now it has put for you number one because it's the first record that you are entering number one and then we shall have uh, quantity let's have 50 kilograms cost price uh, that and the date remember we have assigned it date of purchase the date of purchase is today fourth click at the fourth or today and then uh, you simply move on to the next the beauty about Microsoft as long as you've entered one record and you move your cursor to the next record you are going your system is going to simply save the previous record automatically as long as your cursor jumps out of this record to the next record the previous record is automatically saved so you can have let's assume that uh, there in the item code remember it is a primary key let's enter number one you cannot it it will tell you it will give you a com uh, a prompt it will have that beeping sound to, to notify you that you cannot because this is an auto number you have assigned it auto number and you can only enter item name in the subsequent uh, records so I'm entering another record books the quantity of books is a hundred and the price of books okay and the purchase is simply for today okay so that's the way we enter records there so even if now I'm to close this and I open it again my records will be in my system direct because they have already been stored and uh, they can be retrieved at any point in time I hope this has been uh, uh, good for you you have learned something you have learned how to create a database save it the right way you have also identified or learned how to create a table you have learned the basic concepts of databases and you have learned how to attach different fields or to create different fields in a table saving a table and then entering data in a database table we hope we we i look forward to meeting you in the next class where we shall be uh, attaching two tables together hope you enjoy thank you